on site in North Saanich at Bob and Verna Duncan's farm, Fruit Trees and More. And today Bob is going to demonstrate how to prune fruit trees. Um, so thank you Bob for having us out to your farm today. You're very welcome. Okay, so uh, today what we're going to talk about is uh, the most common method of pruning or training uh, dwarf fruit trees. Um, in front of me is a dwarf cherry and over here there's a dwarf pear and we're going to uh, illustrate how such trees are pruned. So uh, the starting point is um, in the modern era almost all fruit trees are dwarf. Whether they're fruit trees that you're going to plant in your suburban backyard or in a commercial orchard. Uh, the world has now gone to uh, uh, growing fruit trees that you can um, manage standing on the ground. So they're what are called dwarf trees and the, dwarf, the dwarfing is induced in almost all cases by a dwarfing rootstock. So in this particular case we have a cherry which before dwarfing rootstocks became common, cherry trees would typically grow to 30 or 40 or more feet high. Now you can keep a cherry tree to no more than eight or nine feet high, such as the tree that's right in front of me here. And that's possible because of the dwarfing rootstock. So in this particular case is a dwarfing rootstock that was developed in Germany, and it's called Gisela 3. And it dwarfs the, the cherry tree down to about 30% of what it would have been had it been on its own roots. So in the old days, it would have been on a mazard rootstock, which is very vigorous, and you would have ended up with a huge tree. So on this tree, you can see a swelling down here where my hand is. That's where the graft union is. So below that is the dwarfing rootstock. And then this particular variety, which happens to be a lapin, which is one of the most common cherries that you can buy in the grocery stores here in British Columbia. And in fact, it was developed here in British Columbia at the Summerlin Research Station. There was a researcher uh, by the name of K.O. Lappins who this tree was named for. Mm. And it is a, um, a self-fertile cherry. And that's another um, development that's happened increasingly is self-fertile cherries. With sweet cherries, um, historically, you had to have at least two different varieties for cross-pollination. Well, now there's lots of sweet cherries that are self-fertile and all of those cherries are based on work done at our own Summerlin Research Station in the Okanagan Valley. So uh, anyway, so, so what you're looking for with dwarf trees, and this is just a general principle too, is you want to intercept the most light you possibly can and you want to hang your fruit in the sun because fruit that's in the sun will be better colored and, and typically better flavored. So what has been, uh, f what, what researchers have found over the last 20, 30, 40 or more years is that a central leader Christmas tree, uh, pyramidal shaped tree, um, maximizes interception of available sunlight. So when you look at this tree, just to put it in layman's language, just think Christmas tree. Central leader, like so, tiers of branches, Christmas tree shape. So typically when you buy a dwarf fruit tree, in most cases you're buying a two-year-old branch tree. Okay, so um, so the tree is, 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 this branch tree is pruned immediately um, before or just after uh, planting it. Um, and and uh, what you do is you select three or four branches to form the lowest tier. So here you can see these three branches, in this case we're were selected and then you have one shoot going straight up and that shoot is pruned off roughly 20 inches or so above the lowest tier branches. Pruning that the vertical shoot or the central leader um, actually then forces another set of branches. So you can see right where my finger is is where the pruning cut was. So the first summer after you planted it and planting happens in March so um, the first summer you end up with three branches coming out to form your second tier and one going straight up. So then uh, 12 months after that, after two years in the, in the orchard, you prune it again up here and this forces another set of branches to grow. 
And that, and so at this point, two years after you planted it, you've got three tiers. You've got the original tier from that planting, you've got the second tier that formed the first summer, and the, uh, the uh, third tier that forms the summer after that. And then uh, on top of that, you want to um, uh, prune back to produce a nice columnar or Christmas tree shape. So the lowest tier branches at planting are pruned back a little bit just to force side branching and also to induce that nice Christmas tree shape. The following year, um, when you've induced this, the second tier of branches, that's also pruned back to force some side branching and also to maintain a Christmas tree shape. So, uh, and, and similarly, the third tier is pruned to maintain that uh, Christmas tree shape. So in this case here, you can see the lowest tier branches extends about here. So I'm actually gonna prune these back just a little bit, um, just to force that Christmas tree shape. And typically when I prune, I often prune to a lower bud because it will be a weaker growth and a flatter angle, which is what you want. So, um, so essentially, um, you want to produce a tree that's going to intercept available light. You don't want to have crossing branches. Anything that's dead, of course, you prune out. Um, and you also want to have the branches coming out from the trunk at a relatively flat angle. If they're too steep, uh, creates a weak crotch that would, could easily break off with a heavy crop load. So uh, essentially that's the system. And then once the tree has reached the height that you want, you constantly uh, prune it back uh, to a weaker side shoot. So in this case here, uh, I'm not gonna do it right now because I'm gonna let it grow a little bit uh, taller, but in this case here, that could become the next leader and this could be pruned off and that would, be, that would force the height down. So, yeah, so in a, uh, so very simply, that's, uh, that's the training system uh, that's used to produce a central leader, Christmas tree shaped, full dwarf um, tree. So you're trying to intercept the maximum light, not have too high density or too many branches that create too much shading within the uh, structure of the tree. So I hope that's been helpful uh, to you folks who are starting off with dwarf trees in your backyard or even in a small commercial orchard. And trees like this, by the way, they're typically planted uh, uh, five or six feet apart. So you're gonna manage them for maybe eight or nine feet high so you can reach the top of the tree and you can plant them within a row if you want, only five or six feet apart. So even on the smallest uh, property, you could easily fit a number of dwarf trees.